Let the church say amen. Let the church say hallelujah. Let the church say praise the Lord. Let us stand at this time for our call to worship. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Church, the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silent before him. You may be seated for our invocation. O oh, kind and gracious God, we are grateful and thankful for this day. We're grateful, God, that your mercies are new every morning. We are grateful, God, that your grace is still sufficient. And God, we are grateful that your faithfulness toward us never changes. Pray, God, that as we come into this space to worship you, that you will be with us. In fact, we know that you are with us. We feel your presence. And we pray, God, that you give each of us the courage to bring all that we are to this space knowing that you could meet us in our point of need and we can be transformed. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us. In Jesus' name we pray. Lord, prepare me.
the Spirit of the Lord is, there is the one true church, both apostolic and universal, whose holy faith let us reverently and sincerely declare our faith by way of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the people. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of God. Let the church say amen. amen. Do me a favor, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. good morning. It's good to see you. Come on, let's give God praise all over the building. Amen. Amen. Now, you know, um, Sunday after Easter, look it up, is considered Low Sunday. They call it Low Sunday. They call it Low Sunday because Easter is high. And then all the celebration of the resurrection, they call the Sunday after Low Sunday. Amen. But we thank God nonetheless that you are here. And I'm convinced that even though they call it low Sunday, it's still high because you're breathing. Amen. And I wish I had somebody to go ahead and give God praise because you're on this side. Come on, let's celebrate God all over the building. What a mighty God we serve. Come on, let's take a moment. Let's praise God. He's blessed you throughout the week. Your bed of rest last night was not your bed of eternal rest. We've got a witness in the building that can go ahead and give God praise. Say hallelujah. To God be all the glory. Again, we're grateful to have all of you with us on this day. It's a glorious day in the Lord. It's Communion Sunday. It's always good to celebrate God on Communion Sunday. And uh, we're grateful to have all of you with us on this day. So at this time, your order of worship, we have Reverend Diane Bonham, who will come and lead us in the reading of Scripture. After we have the reading of Scripture, the Reverend Curlin Hood will come and lead us to the throne of grace in a word of prayer this morning. That is the order. Let the church say amen. amen. Our scripture reading this morning will come from the Gospel of St. John, chapter 20, verses 19 through 31. And I will be reading from the New International Version. And it reads, Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the tomb had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciples, the one Jesus loved and said, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb and we don't know where they have put him. Okay. 19 through 31 and it reads, on the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hand and side. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone his sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Now Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. 
So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe it. <coughs> A week later, his disciples were in the house again and Thomas was with them. And though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here, see my hands, reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, my Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Jesus did many other miracles, miraculous signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be unto God. Let the church say amen. amen. It's time for prayer. And as we center ourselves at this moment of prayer, and as Reverend Carlin Hood prepares to lead us to the throne of grace, how many of you know the power of prayer? Amen. amen. I know the power of prayer. I've been a beneficiary of those who knew how to pray when I didn't even know the words of prayer. I said every time I have the opportunity that God is so powerful that God is still answering the prayers of my grandmother and she's been dead and gone for over 20 years. Prayer is powerful. And so we, we open up the altar and invite those who desire prayer to come to the altar at this, at this time for prayer. The Bible tells us that the power of intercessory prayer, that there are times and moments where you can stand in the gap for someone else. So if there's someone in your family, someone in your community, someone in your friend circle that needs you to stand in the gap, the altar is open for those of you who desire to come in and intercede on our behalf. The Bible also tells us that prayer is so powerful that even when we don't have the words to say, y'all, listen to this, even when we don't know the words of prayer, that the inner Holy Spirit will hear our groanings and moanings of our heart and take that petition to God who still sits high and look low. Prayer is powerful, y'all. So as we center ourselves for prayer and, and as you look to God and look to God on yourself, on, on behalf of yourself, if that's something that you are in need of, and as Reverend Curlin Hood comes now and prepares us for prayer. Jesus. He is so awesome. He's been so good to us. Mm -mm. He said, stop doubting and believe. So most gracious Father, we come to you this morning. Some of us <coughs> have restless nights and some of us have peaceful nights. But God, we thank you, God, that you were in it, no matter what state of mind we were in, God. That you was watching over us. You gave us a mind 
to understand your words, Lord. We thank you. We thank you for our rising. And we thank you, God, for having our being this morning. Lord, we know that without you, we could do nothing. We couldn't bend our legs or put our feet on the floor this morning, Lord. And some of us didn't, wasn't able to do that this morning. Some of us wasn't even able to, to, to breathe this morning, Lord. But you saw fit that all of us here, God, was able to do that. So we thank you. We thank you, God, for your mercy this morning. We thank you this morning for your grace that you've given us, Lord. We thank you for keeping us in our right minds, God. And God, we thank you for answering prayers, Lord, that we didn't know what to do with, God. You said just if we was just confess with our mouth and believe in our hearts, Lord, without doubting, Lord, that you'll give us what we ask for, Lord. We ask you right now, God, to meet every need in this place, Lord. Some need healing. Some need financial freedom, Lord. But you know all about it. You know each and every one of us, Lord. Lord, we know, know that you know our hearts, Lord. And God, anything that's in our hearts that's not like you, God, we ask you to take it from us, Lord. Relieve us from it, Father. Yes. God, we thank you that anybody that's sick, God, we ask you that your body will function in the way that you made it to function. Without you, we could do nothing. And we bless your name this morning. We give you praise and we give you honor. We give you the glory that you deserve this morning, Lord. Lord, you are wonderful in our sight. God, your providence is just so beautiful. You have beautiful people in it, Lord. We have good people in it, Lord. And God, we ask you to bless them, God, from the top of their heads to the soles of their feet, God. God, we thank you that you bring victory to our lives, Lord. And God, we thank you and we praise you for the angel of this house. And we thank you for all the sick and shut in, Lord. We ask you right now to just go by their bedside and whisper in their ear this morning, Lord, to let, you know, let them know that you are with them always and you'll never leave them or forsake them. So we thank you this morning, Father. We love you and we praise you. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. And amen. Let the church say amen. amen. Let the church say hallelujah. hallelujah. Let the church say praise the, Lord. praise the Lord. We certainly thank you, Reverend Bonham, for the reading of scripture and Reverend Hood. We thank you for leading us to the throne of grace at this time. At this time, we have our officers coming forth as we prepare to receive our offering this morning. We pray that whatever God leads in your heart to be a blessing to us, we receive it in the name of Jesus. And certainly know that whatever seeds you plant in this ministry, you're certainly planted on further ground. For those of you who like to pay virtually, your given app is on the bottom of your program. You can give that way as well. Onram.org slash St. Stephen AME Zion slash give. Let the church say amen. At this time, I'm going to have Reverend Bonner come and bless the release of the offering. At that time, she will have all of us stand. You can come around and bring your offering, and then Reverend Hood will offer the offertory. Let the church say amen. Let us pray. 
Our Father and our God, we thank you, O Heavenly Father, for this offering. We thank you, O God, for releasing from the coats of glory that which you have said we would receive. We ask, O Father, that, you, that this be used for the upbuilding of thy kingdom. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Let us stand. as we are directed by the ushers from the back of the church. church say amen. amen and to God be the glory to God be the glory we are grateful uh, to first lady to one a kid in absentia to our trustee chairman to our preacher Stewart to our trustee chairman brother Forrest Fleming our preacher Stewart sister Sharon Lipscomb to Reverend Carolyn Hood to Reverend Diane Bonham to our superannuated retired pastor Reverend Conneth Clinton and his beautiful bride Mrs. Alberta Clinton to our deaconess president, Mrs. Betty Phillips, to our ushers. Look at them. Let the church say amen. amen. We we're grateful for our ushers. To Brother Steve, our videographer on today. To our musician, Brother Brandon. Listen, I'm naming everybody because it's just good to be around everybody. I greet you in the magnificent, marvelous, miraculous name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus, who is the Christ. Amen. amen. Good to have all of you with us. Sister Kit sends her greetings. Our daughter Morgan is the keynote speaker at the University of uh, North Carolina at Pembroke. She is the keynote speaker this morning for their AKA event. And you know her mama wanted to be with her because her daddy wanted to be with her too. Uh, <laughs> but I, I said to want to go be with baby girl. And listen, Morgan has been home. And those who know Morgan, she's the youngest. And she know how to, she know how to get us, right? So she's been home all week long and she has gotten us all week long. <laughs> Lord have mercy. 30 something days, Miss Betty, she's going to be graduating. Let the church say 30 something days. I wish I knew the exact, I got it written on my phone. I know the exact time, the hour, and to the minute she graduates, but we're grateful for her. So uh, Tawana is with her this morning. She sends her love to all of you. Say, hey, she couldn't be here because I know she's really going to be upset when I let her know that uh, Mrs. Cassie. And Mr. Lacey Rush are here today. Uh, so we're grateful. Come on, let's celebrate them today. Miss Cass, I'm going to text her right now. And let her know that y'all are here today. We love you, Mrs. Uh, Cassie and Mr. Lacey. Y'all know that. And we're grateful. Miss Cassie, uh, we are grateful for all that you have done for this church and all that you have tried to do for this church. 
Know that what you have done for this church is unparalleled, and we're grateful for your love of St. Stephen, and it is good. It is so good. It is so, so good to have you with us on this morning to celebrate communion. So come on, let's celebrate Mr. Cassie, Ms. Cassie, and Mr. Lacey Rush one more time. Amen. I'm, te I'm texting her right now. <laughs> she just texted and said, tell them hello and give her a kiss. Amen. Amen. So she's listening. Amen. So she said she was going to listen. Amen. Uh, to God be the glory. I have a few announcements that I want to give. Please, ma'am, please, sir, mark it on your calendar. I know you already know it. But on all, uh, April the 21st, we will have our church anniversary. Let the church say amen. 123 years of excellence. Come on, let's celebrate God for 123 years. We are grateful that Reverend Henrico White, the pastor of the Weeping Willow AME Zion Church in Charlotte, and the former ba uh, pastor of this parish will come and be our guest, guest preacher. He's excited. I'm excited. I told uh, Reverend White when he was here for Sister Carl's homegoing celebration, I seen him walking, he, he called and told me that he was coming, and he's a really good friend of mine, and we tease a lot. And I seen him out there hugging members of the church, and he came up to the pool, I said, man, listen, get on back to Charlotte. <laughs> get on back to Charlotte, get away from St. Stephen, amen. And we laughed about it, but we we're grateful that he has agreed to be our preacher for that morning, and we look forward to all of you being here. Uh, we come before you also to invite you to our inaugural vision casting event. They'll be here, here at St. Stephen on the Saturday, on that day before. So we're going to have a full weekend. Our vision casting uh, event will be held here on Saturday, April the 20th, beginning at 11 a.m. So we're asking all of you to come out uh, to be a part of this. They, this team has worked hard uh, since September. Faithler and Thrive team has worked hard since September, and we need your support to come out and be a part of it. So much more we will share with you. We're preparing a flyer and we have a save the date to give out to you at a later date. Also on this uh, immediately following service, there'll be a video snippets in the fellowship hall. So they're gonna ask you questions like, how long you've been a member? What is your favorite memory of St. Stephen? What do you like best about St. Stephen? What would you like to see the church do? And other shout outs. So we're asking you to come uh, for those who wanna be on video for 30, just 30 to second. 30 to 60 second comments about your beloved St. Stephen and those questions will be asked immediately following service. We want to thank Steve for agreeing to stay over. Uh, Steve Coffey, who was our video, he's so gracious to us. Every time we call him, he's right on the spot and we're grateful for your ministry, Steve, and uh, how much you pour out to us. So Steve will stay over on this afternoon. So if you have any comments you want to share, just come to the fellowship hall after service. Let the church say amen. amen. I have a couple of cards I would like to read. The first one is from, it says, thank you, Dr. Reginald Kitt. Your thoughtfulness means so much more than words can say. With love, Kiana Carrier. Let the church say amen. amen. To the young adult ministry, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. How's that? With love, Kiana Carrier. Come on, let's celebrate God. I think that's all I have as far as announcements. Um, if I'm forgetting something, charge it to the head and not the heart. I really want to get to this word and preach this word. And I want to get to the table, y'all. I want to get to the Lord's table. It's always good to come and gather on first Sunday. Uh, continue to pray for the Mount Vernon family, a uh, homegoing celebration of their beloved uh, pastor for the, over the last 40 something years. His celebration of life was on yesterday. I'm going to miss my friend. Reverend F.O. Bass was indeed a friend, and I'm going to miss him. I got to share some, some time with him before he passed away. But I did miss a phone call probably a week before he passed. I was in the meeting, and I saw a phone call coming through, and I missed it. And uh, I know he was probably calling me, giving me some words of wisdom, but uh, he know I was his friend, and I know he was my friend, and I'm going to miss him. So continue to pray for that church as they begin to search for their new pastor. Amen. It's good to be here, y'all. Um, a husband and wife woke up one morning. The wife woke up early, started talking to the husband. And they was getting ready for church. The wife woke up excited. Uh, Mrs. Clinton, she was getting dressed. She started playing the gospel music, and the husband laid there in the bed. And the wife said, get up, talking to the husband. And he said, no, 
I ain't getting up. I don't feel like going to church today. And the husband said, I'm going to give you three good reasons why I don't want to go to church. He said, number one, the congregation is cold. Number two, don't nobody like me. And number three, I just don't feel like going. And the wife said, let me give you three good reasons why you should go. Number one, the congregation is warm. They're not cold. She said, number two, some people like you. And number three, you the pastor. <laughs> Let church say amen. That's what's so good about this sermon today. Listen, listen, let's be real. Some days you just don't feel like it. And it's okay. But now that you're here, now that you're here, let's hear a word from the Lord. So at this time, we're going to have the choir give us a selection. Y'all like that? Was that good? Did I, did I do good? Miss Betty, y'all like that? Amen. 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 I did good. Amen. Amen. At this time, the crowd will bless us with a selection, and I will come forth with this word. If you're going to pray for me, say amen. 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 I just want to be right. 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 When you see me walking up alone, I just want to be right. When you see me singing my song, I just want to be right. When you see me testifying, I just want to be right. When you see me give God the praise, yeah, I just want to be right. Say right. Yeah, I just want to be right. Say right. Oh, Lord. I just want to be right. I just want to be right. Lord, will you help me be right? see me walking alone I just want to be right when you see me singing my song I just want to be right when I go down to pray I just want to be right when you see me walking day to day I just want to be right say right Say right, Lord, yeah. Say right, oh Lord. Say right, yeah. Oh, be right, be right, be right. I wanna, I wanna be right, be right. Thank you, Reverend Bonham, for the reading of our scripture, John chapter 20, beginning with verse 19. 
and she concluded at verse 31. She read from the New International Version. I'm just going to lift up verse 24 through 27 from the New International Version. I'm going to preach from that whole pericope, so keep your Bibles open. Beginning with verse 24, now Thomas, also known as Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where, his, where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were in the house again and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands? Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My God and my Lord. With your prayer for consideration on this communion Sunday, I want to talk from this thought, from doubt to life, from doubt to life. Let us pray. Come thou, incarnate word, gird on thy mighty sword, our prayers attend. Come and thy people bless, and give thy word success, spirit of holiness, on us to sin. Let the words of my mouth in the meditation of my heart, be acceptable into thy sight, O God. You are truly our strength and our redeemer. Let those who love the Lord say amen. amen. Hallelujah. And thank you, God. From doubt to life. From doubt to life. Beloved, as we conclude this book of John, we have been in the book of John. The first summer we preached from the book of John was on November the 26th, 2023. And here we are at the 1st of April as we conclude this journey through the book of John. And what a journey it has been. We come to this pericope of scripture. It's the lectionary text from the Gospel of John for this week. And I want to, from the onset, let you know that Thomas often gets a bad rap. Thomas is often referred to as Doubting Thomas. But I want to shine a different light on Thomas this morning because Thomas is really a significant figure in the Bible, particularly in the Gospel of John. Uh, Thomas was a faithful follower. Thomas was one of the 12 disciples chosen by Jesus. And he followed Jesus throughout his ministry, demonstrating his commitment and dedication to the teachings of Jesus Christ. Thomas had an inquisitive nature about him, y'all. While Thomas is often remembered for his doubt or nature, it's essential to recognize that his doubt stemmed from a sincere desire to understand and to verify truth. Amen. Let the church say amen. Not only was he a faithful follower, not only did Thomas have this inquisitive nature, Thomas was devoted to truth. Though Thomas had skepticism, this skepticism that Thomas had was not born out of stubbornness, but of a genuine pursuit of truth. We notice in the text, when he encounters the resurrected Jesus, he seeks confirmation by touching the wounds of Jesus. So Thomas beloved. I want to uh, shine this light on him. Thomas' character encompasses more than just this temporary moment of doubt. Because let's be honest, what if you and I was only judged by some things in our life that is not so pleasing? So I want to shine a different light on, on Thomas because Thomas embodies quality of loyalty, uh, qualities of courage, quality of inquisitiveness, uh, qualities of devoted to truth, profound faith, and he had a missionary zeal. I'm talking about Thomas, y'all. So this, for me, beloved, makes Thomas a significant and admirable figure in the biblical narratives. Yet we have to deal with this doubt, don't we? Can I help somebody out? Doubt is not the opposite of faith. 
In fact, doubt is one of the elements of faith. I'm helping somebody this morning. Faith is not the absence of doubt, but the presence of trust. Doubt is a necessary component of faith. Y'all, can I help somebody? The opposite of faith is not doubt, but the opposite of faith is certainty. Doubt is the vestibule through which all must pass before they can enter into the temple of wisdom. Let me say that one more time. Doubt is the vestibule that all of us will have to go through, which all of us must pass before we can enter into the temple of wisdom. We're no strangers to doubt, are we? All of us who have a, a darker melanin in our bodies, consider black folk, all of us within the context of black bodies, uh, existing in a predominantly white culture, know what it's like to be doubted, don't we? It's not a simple matter of question of beliefs, but we fight against systems that continually oppress us, and we look throughout our historical, historical context, we know that human, the humanity and dignity of black individuals has been doubted, y'all. Throughout black people, throughout history, black people have faced a relentless doubt, both externally and internalized. And as we navigate a society built upon white, or built upon white supremacist frameworks, we know what it's like to be doubted, don't we? The denial of black humanity, black people have been subjected to doubt regarding a very humanity, y'all. When this constitution was instituted, we would consider three-fifths of a person, y'all. We've been doubted from the beginning. We've been doubted our intellectual inferiority. Doubt has been cast upon black intellect, y'all. As, as black folk, we've been cast and stereotyped that we just can't get it, y'all, that we're not as intelligent as other folk. But truth be told, we have oppressed uh, 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 our way and built colleges because we know they doubted us, but we pressed our way anyway. Black bodies have faced doubt and suspicion merely for existing in public spaces, y'all. We know what it's like to be doubted. Yes. We know what it's like to get, our, uh, get looked at simply because we are black, y'all. We know what it's like to be stereotyped simply because we are black, y'all. We know what it's like to have doubt cast upon us, not just from folk, but, but from systems that are put in place to, because they doubt us. That's why politicians, especially in Florida, is working so hard to put in policies because they doubt us, y'all. They don't see us, y'all. And I hate to tell you that you are fearfully and wonderfully made because in spite of all the doubt that has been cast upon us, look at you now. We have colleges named in black folks' names. Uh, we have doctors in the midst. We have judges. We have preachers. We have teachers because even though they doubted us, look what God has done. God has done marvelous and miraculous things in the midst of doubt. Black people rose to the occasion and spoke truth to power. That's why I like to elevate W.E.B. Du Bois and Angela Davis and folk who spoke truth to power in the midst of systems that told us we weren't nothing and that constantly doubted us when we rose to the occasion. I'm talking about doubt, y'all. So consider, consider in our text this morning, often referred to as Doubt and Thomas. The crucifixion took place. And now, after the cru crucifixion, the Bible tells us, let's pick it up in verse 24, that the disciples were hiding. They were hiding, y'all. Judas had killed himself. They were hiding. Ten was in there hiding. And they figured uh, because they killed Jesus, and they followed Jesus that surely they was coming after them to kill them next. So the Bible tells us they are in this room, they are locked up, they are closed up because they feared that they were going to be killed. Can I help somebody? And in the midst of their fear, in the midst of them hiding out, the Bible tells us that, that Jesus shows up. And you got to understand that now he's resurrected. His resurrected body can do what his earthly body couldn't do. I, I know, I know. Let me hear you. He, he's resurrected now. And his resurrected body can do what his earthly body can't do. So they are locked up in this room. And all of a sudden, the resurrected Jesus shows up in the midst of their fear and tells them, peace be unto you. 
That's a word all of itself right there. I can get happy right there because now that he's resurrected, he comes in the midst of their fear and tells them, peace be unto you. Yes. Here's what I want you to understand. Thomas was not in the room. First time Jesus shows up, you got to read the periquery, don't read too fast. The first time Jesus appears to them, Thomas is not in the room. So he hadn't got word that Jesus has risen. And I want to tell you, uh, just why I want to bring highlight and, and, and let's, let's celebrate Thomas. Let's not beat up on Thomas so much like historically we do. Uh, Thomas is not in the room when he showed up for the first time. And I want to let you know, Thomas is not scared like them other disciples. While other disciples are hiding, Thomas is merely pouting, y'all. He, he's pouting. He just seen Jesus crucified. He just seen the one that he had been with for three and a half years in this earthly ministry. He's seen him crucified. He's pouting. And I came to prove to you through Bible that Thomas ain't scared, nor is Thomas a doubter, y'all. He just had a doubting moment. Can I prove it to you? Thomas ain't scared, y'all. If you go back to verse uh, chapter 11, when the Bible tells us, I preach it, y'all, that Lazarus was dead. Guess what Thomas said? The Bible says in John chapter 11, Jesus told him, listen, Lazarus is dead. G uh, Thomas said in verse 16, he said that Thomas, also known as Didymus, said to the rest of the disciples, let us also go that we may die with him. Uh, Thomas ain't scared, y'all. Thomas said if, if, if Lazarus is dead, let us go where he is so that we may die also. Thomas was scared in John chapter 14. Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. Thomas Thomas said to him, well, we don't know where you're going, Jesus. How do we know the way? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Thomas said, all right, then. Now that I know where you're going, we're going to go too. Thomas ain't scared, nor is Thomas a doubter. <laughs> Doubt is different than unbelief. Yes. Let me help somebody. Doubt is in the mind, y'all. You know, you just gotta, you, you, you just need more information, right? You, you know some people, right, that just, they gotta have more information. It's not that they're bad people, they just gotta have more information. They, just, they, gotta, they got an inquisitive nature about them, they just gotta know. And Thomas, and doubt is in your mind, but listen, unbelief is in your heart. And when you got unbelief, ain't no matter what you tell folk, they ain't gonna believe it. No matter what you say, no matter what you do, they got unbelief in their heart and they ain't gonna believe nothing you say, nothing you pray, nothing you preach because it's not doubt they're dealing with, it's unbelief. And my brothers and sisters, I'm glad I got a mature theology now that I'm 51 years old, y'all. And I got, a, I got a faith now that lets me know if he don't do nothing else, he does enough. He don't got to prove to me because I, don't, I may have a doubting moment, but I still have a lead. I know that he can turn my doubts and into faith. I know that he can turn around. God, if he don't do nothing else, he's already done enough. He don't have to part the Red Sea for me again. He's done enough. He don't have to die on the cross for me again. He's done enough. And if he don't do nothing else for me, he's done enough. Is there anybody in the building that can testify he's done enough? turn my life around. He, he's done enough. He's forgiven me of my sins. He's done enough. He's healed my body. He's done enough. He's touched my heart. He's done enough. If we don't do nothing else, he's done enough. Hallelujah. He's done enough. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. So, so look at verse 25. It says, so the other disciples told him, look, Thomas, we, we've seen the Lord. But he said to them, look, I know what you said, but uh, unless I see the nail marks for myself and put my finger where his nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Listen, don't beat up on him, y'all. I told you don't beat up on him too much. Because listen, the only reason they believe is because they saw it. So they expect Thomas to have belief based on their testimony. Come here, somebody. 
And some of us still going through the motions of our grandmas than faith. And every now and then, you're going to have to see him for yourself. And Thomas is saying, I know what you're telling me. I know what you're saying. I know you're saying you saw him, but I didn't see it. And I'm not going to believe it until I see it for myself. You saw him come in your midst. You saw him say, peace be still. You saw him. You touched him. And I can't go on your face. I got to see it for myself. I don't care how how loud you shout. I got to see it for myself. I don't care how many sermons you preach. I got to see it for myself, pastor. I don't care how hard you pray. I got to see it for myself. And listen, all of us have different experiences, don't we? And that's why I love to embody people's lived experience. We can't force everybody into what we want to be in because all of us have our different testimonies about how good God's been to you. Some people can shout uh, off your testimony for being delivered from drugs. I can't shout that testimony because I've never experienced drugs. I can't shout off your testimony for being delivered from alcohol. Uh, I can't say I ain't had a drink or two before. <laughs> Let church say amen. 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 Don't look at me like that. You have to. <laughs> you don't say amen. Say out. Say out. Say out. Oh. So I can't shout off your testimony of being delivered from being an alcoholic because that ain't my testimony. But I was on my way to hell. And I heard a voice of Jesus say, at the cross where I first saw the light and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight and now I am happy all the day. Is there a witness in the building that can testify? He's done it for me. Don't fool me now. As he touched your body, as he turned you around and placed your feet on solid ground, I wish I had the witness that could testify. He's touched me. He's done enough. Come on, let's praise God. But here it is. Here where it's get good, y'all. It gets, it, it gets good. Verse 26 and 29. Listen, in verse 25, he's doubting Thomas. He's doubt, he is doubting. He's doubting. But listen, verse 26 through 29, his doubt turns into life. He goes from doubting, watch this, to shouting. Can I prove it? Come on. A week later, his disciples were in the house again. This time, Thomas was with them. Come come on. Y'all miss it. A week later, his disciples are in the house again. And Thomas was with them. This time, he's with them. And though the doors were locked, Jesus came again. Y'all missed it stood among them and he said it again. Let the church say again. Again. Peace be with you. And then guess what y'all? Jesus starts talking directly to Thomas. Y'all missed it. I'm getting happy all by myself. Uh, Jesus starts talking directly to Thomas because Jesus wants to erase Thomas's doubt. Y'all help me somebody. Jesus looks directly at Thomas and said, here, come here Thomas. Uh, 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 put your finger here and see my hands. Uh, uh, reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believing. And Thomas said, my Lord and my God. Is there anybody in the building that when Jesus erased your doubt, you begin to say, my Lord, my God. When Jesus erased your doubt and let you know that you would never leave you, nor forsake you, all you can shout out is my God, my Lord. When you know your sins are forgiven, my Lord and my God. When you know you love you with an agape love, my Lord and my God. Do I got a witness in the building? He's a race all doubt because I know, because I touched him for myself, my Lord and my God. Thomas, he, he, he put his hands on Jesus. And now, he wasn't uh, uh, living off of faith based upon what the disciples told him. He saw it for himself. 
And when he saw it for himself, he couldn't do nothing but shout glory to God. And I wish I had a witness in the house that you've tried him for yourself. You've heard folk talk about him, but you've tried him for yourself. You realize your sins are forgiven. You realize you are a new creation. You realize there's a cost to praise him like this. I got to witness in the building that don't mind praising God and said he's done it for me. They don't know your story. Thank you, Lord. Uh, but you know what God has done for you. Thank you. you come to give him your hallelujah best praise. Yeah. He walks with me. He talks with me. Yeah. And then can I close by letting you know that some of us have the outstanding balance we need to pay. Uh, you know what an outstanding balance is, don't you? Uh, when you got something that you owe, that you gotta pay. And some of us got an outstanding balance to pay because of how good God's been to us throughout this week. And we forgot to tell him thank you. Monday, God blessed you. You forgot to tell him thank you. Tuesday, God blessed you. And you forgot to tell him thank you. Uh, Wednesday, God blessed you. And you forgot to tell him thank you. Thursday, God blessed you. And you forgot to tell him thank you. Friday, God blessed you. And you forgot to tell him thank you. Saturday, God blessed you. And you forgot to tell him thank you. But thanks be to God, you got up on this Sunday morning and you got a praise in your heart because now you can make up for your outstanding balance. He's been good to you. Somebody shout thank you. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout glory to God because he's been good to you. You've seen it for yourself. You know he can turn it around. Come on, shout thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you for healing my body. Thank you, God. Thank you for saving my soul. Thank you, God. Thank you for healing my broken heart. Thank you, God. Somebody say thank you, God. From doubt, from doubt to life. Beloved, Thomas' story, it challenges us to not deny, but to embrace our doubts. To seek truth earnestly and to encounter the risen Christ in our lives. Let us, let us remember this, that doubt, look, leave this place with this in your spirit. Doubt is not the enemy of faith, but rather it's companion. It's a companion of faith on this journey toward deeper understanding and unwavering belief. May we, like Thomas, encounter the living Christ and proclaim with conviction, my Lord and my God. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the blessed Holy Spirit. From doubt to life. Let the church say amen. amen. Let us stand all over the building. We stand all over the building. Once it's the invitation of Christian discipleship. President one, under the sound of my voice, who have not given your life to Christ. Now is your moment. We're grateful for this gospel of John. We started preaching this gospel on the 29th of November. And since then, 18 members have joined the church. Come on, let's celebrate God. I want to be very clear, it's not because of my preaching. It's because the Bible says if you lift Jesus up, he'll do all the drawing. 
So we're just going to continue to talk about Jesus. And if there are anyone under the sound of my voice who have not believed in your heart and confessed with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord of all, then we invite you to this relationship with Jesus. Listen, perhaps there's someone that is doubting. That's okay. That's okay. That, that's where a nurturing church comes in. I just ask you to come with your doubt, give your heart to God, and then we can begin to nurture you and help you on this journey. Maybe not to erase all your doubt, but to help you manage that which is in you. If there's anyone of the sound of my voice who have not given your life to Christ, would you come? Then the second invitation is for those of you who want to come and join the fellowship of the St. Stephen Metropolitan AME Zion Church. Perhaps you feel that pricking in your heart and you want to come. Then we invite you now to come and join the fellowship of the St. Stephen Metropolitan AME Zion Church where we are committed to winning souls for Christ. Is there one who wants to come and join our fellowship? Would you come? Hallelujah. Come on, let's celebrate God. We've been waiting on it. <clears throat> come on, let's celebrate God. Oh, come on, let's celebrate. <clears throat> And as you stand, is there another? Y'all, let, let me get right, y'all. Let me get right. If there's another who want to come and join the fellowship, you may come. Next week is not promised, y'all. All we have is today. And we are grateful. So if you want to come, 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 come. We want you to be a part of our fellowship. We're committed. We're going to nurture. We hope that we live a life to inspire you. We want to be committed. And we're going to evangelize the gospel of Jesus Christ. In other words, we're going to be nice. Is there another? Amen. You may be seated. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Blessed is he that considers the poor. The Lord will deliver him in the time of trouble. At this time, the deacons will come forth as we prepare for the Lord's Supper.
let us stand. If anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And he is the perpetuation of our sins. Not for ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. Wherefore you that do truly and earnestly repent of your sins and are in love and harmony with your neighbors and intend to lead a new life, follow the commandments of God and walk from henceforth in his holy way, draw near with faith and take the holy sacrament to your comfort and devoutly kneeling, make your humble confession to Almighty God. You may be seated. The general confession together. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and may well thy manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against your divine majesty, provoking most justly your wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past. And grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please you in the newness of life. To the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of your great mercies have promised forgiveness of sins to all who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto thee. Have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all sins, confirm and strengthen us in our goodness, and bring us to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, and to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We do not presume to come to this your holy table, O merciful Lord, trusted in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies, we are not worthy so much as to gather up to the crumbs under your table. But you are the same, Lord, whose property is to always have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may live and grow thereby, and that being washed through his most precious blood, we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Let those who love the Lord amen. say amen. 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 Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of your tender mercies did give your only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made thereby offered himself a full sacrifice, offering a satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute in his holy gospel, command us to continue a perpetual memory of his death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we humbly beg you and grant that we receive in these your elements of bread and wine. According to your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, holy institution, and remember of his death and passion, may be partakers of your most blessed body and blood, who on the same night he was betrayed. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given to you for the remembrance of me. Likewise, at the cup he took the cup, at the supper he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you, and for many for the remissions of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let the church say Amen. Amen. Yeah. 
Clinton. Together, it is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God. Therefore, with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Amen. 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 Let us stand. And as you stand, the ushers will have you come down. We ask if you will, please use a sanitized station on each side. And we're asking no more than 10 persons per side to come. devoutly kneeling make your humble confession before God 
The communion is two-sided. One side is for the bread, the other side is for the juice. If you're having trouble with your package, please just tilt your hand up and one of the ministers will come around to assist you. At this time, you may take the cup that is before you. On one side, open it, you have the bread, which is the representation of the body of our Lord and Savior. When you have it, break it. His body was broken for you and I. After you break it, eat it. And remember that Christ's body was broken for you. The minister or the deaconess can help assist with your elements. On the other side, you may open it. And it's the juice, which is a representation of the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Take and drink this. And remember that Christ's blood was shed for thee. And be thankful. my father's children the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ was shed for thee take and drink this and remember that Christ's blood was shed for thee and go in peace arise my father's children and go in peace as these depart others may come we are grateful for your patience We are earning this communion on today, y'all. Let the church say amen. amen. We thank God for your patience. As these depart, others may come. that are able, devoutly kneeling. Make your humble confession before God. And if you're having trouble, we'll come around and assist you. Before you have a cup, you may take the cup. On one side, you got to open it for the bread, which is a representation of the body. On the other side, you have the cup, which is a representation of the blood. Take the one with the bread. You may take it, break it. The body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which is broken for thee, take and eat this. The other side is the wine. our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ which is shared for thee take and drink this and remember that Christ's blood was shed for thee and be thankful arise my father's children 
and go in peace. Take this way. Be prepared to be served. Mrs. Clinton and Mrs. Mack, I can bring it to you too. I can bring it to you all. Yeah. Come with me. Come with me. Devoutly kneeling. body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ which is broken for thee take and eat this and remember that Christ's body was broken for thee and be thankful Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which He shed for thee, take and drink this. And remember that Christ's blood was shed for thee, and be thankful. Arise, my father's children, and go in peace. Amen. We have communed with everyone. Let the church say amen. amen. Let the church say hallelujah. hallelujah. Let the church say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. At this time, the deaconess will cover and we will conclude our communion service.
Let the church say amen. amen. Let us say the Lord's prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. As we forgive those who trespass against us, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, O oh Lord, our Heavenly Father, we, your humble servants, desire your fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Most humbly asking you to grant that by the merits and death of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and your whole church may obtain the forgiveness of our sins and all other benefits of your passion. And we offer and present to you, O oh Lord, our souls and bodies to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice, humbly asking you that all who are partakers of this Holy Communion may be filled with your grace and heavenly benediction. And although we are unworthy through our many sins to offer unto you any sacrifice, yet we ask you to accept this our obligation to ministry and service, not wearing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom, by whom and with whom in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto you, O Father Almighty, world without end. Let the church say amen. amen. Glory be to God on high, and earth peace, good will toward men. We praise you, we bless you, we worship you, we glorify you, we give thanks to you for your great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God of the Father Almighty. O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you that who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. You who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. You who takes away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You who sit at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For you only art holy, you only art the Lord, you only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost are most high in the glory of God the Father, let the church say, Amen. 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 To God be the glory. Come on, let's give God praise. Come on, let's celebrate God. What a glorious day, y'all. Come on, let's celebrate God. One more soul. Come on, let's celebrate God. Join the fellowship of this church. Come on, let's celebrate God. Ain't God doing it, y'all? I do, let's celebrate God. I know, I know, I know. I know it's, it, we've been here an hour and 45 minutes. Come on, let's celebrate God anyway. We had good church. Someone joined the church and somebody's still going to tell me, service is too long, Pastor. <laughs> let's church say amen. amen. they still going to say it, Miss Clinton. Service is too long, Pastor. We thank God anyhow. We have meetings longer than this, y'all, trust me. So we thank God for this time that we've shared together. And we're grateful for God's blessings. Welcome. Welcome, Dr. Bush. We're grateful that you have chosen the St. Stephen Church to be a part of. We are grateful for your spirit. And we're grateful for you being here. Thank you to all of you. To Maya, we are praying for you. I'm grateful that Reverend Hood and uh, Minister... Uh, Reverend Bonham was able to minister to you and uh, we are praying for you uh, know that you're not by yourself and we are praying for you as we are praying for all of you on this day uh, remember uh, we're having a video snippet if you want to come you may come to the fellowship hall and give your uh, highlights of the St. Stephen Church we love each of you with the love of Christ and we pray that God shines this glorious majesty on you this week. Listen, you may have doubt, but don't let that stop you from praising God. Amen. Amen. Doubt is an element of faith. So continue to search for God's unsearchable truths. And continue to walk and prayerfully like Thomas, you will have an encounter where you can say, my Lord and my God, I see you working on my behalf. Let that be our collective testimony. Let us bow our heads to receive the benediction. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, 
keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessings of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be among you and remain with you always. One quick announcement before you go. We are having quarterly conference on next Monday the 15th. Uh, we have blank copies for those auxiliary leaders. Please get your copy and try to have it filled out by Wednesday so we can be prepared for presiding elder for our quarterly conference. Uh, normally the last quarterly conference of the conference year will be in person, but it is virtual. So please, ma'am, please, sir, get your copy before you leave. And um, yeah, I think that's it. To God be the glory. May God be with you. Peace be unto all of you. Uh, I love you with the love of Christ. Do me a favor. Look at your neighbor. Come on, look at, look at, look at it like that. Just look at him. I ain't say, say nothing. Yeah, just look at him. <laughs> smile at him. Look at him. Smile. Smile. Look at somebody. Look at somebody. And say, neighbor. Neighbor. From doubting. From doubting. To life. Look at your other neighbor. Say, neighbor. neighbor. I know that's right. I know that's right. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Y'all better come back here and talk to me. Hmm? I said, y'all better come back here and talk to me. Okay. I said, how many know that God is able to come back here?